Hello everyone, this is Ethan the Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. As you can see, we barely made it to tier 38. It might not look that way, necessarily, but with our plus 198 offense scoring team, we should have definitely ended out with a much higher lift than we did, but details as we go on here. There's also another thing where we have we don't have lift loss protection for like the last two hours of the season, so we'll have to worry about that. Not necessarily in terms of staying in vault, because we've already clinched that, but just more for ranking perhaps. Lose, we can lose up to 50 lifts. Also forgot to mention for our defense layout, I decided to meme and bring in Harmonize Catria to see if anyone would do exactly what this opponent did. <laughs> but overall this team is pretty mean. There's too many weaknesses to it. But because of the rally from Catria, Nana gets to quad and he doesn't need to quad to pick up the kill here, but if it were a higher merge ascended being buffed more, that extra two attacks would definitely help, but uh, definitely not good for the enemy there. And well, that's just an instant surrender. We also got plenty of rematches this season, I imagine, because of the team we were running and, of course, how we cleared some of these matches. But overall, on offense, not too shabby. We definitely goofed a couple of times on offense. One of the biggest goofs was not realizing that Nino was going to enemy phase one round KO kill a Brave Hector. So I ended a match way too early and didn't pick up either ether structure. So I needed to make sure on my second to last match this season that I picked up those ether structures, which turned out wasn't too bad because we ended up casually getting a potato ball team that wasn't fully optimized. There was no seven slot unit to hit and turn with. So there was Niffle, Ascended, Bjorn, Plane, Sothis, Yoon, and I believe Basis Yoon as near save. No no no, it was Halloween Mur as near save. So it was pretty straightforward because we could just aggro however we wanted and get them to move out. There was no potatoing all day long. And unfortunately, their Ascended Fjorm actually had a speed stat. I believe she had 72 speed. And my Nino maxes out at 78 speed. But that's only a cadence adjacent to Nino for max ally support and peonies buffing as well flower of joy we couldn't set all of that up and even if we could i believe we still would have to dance afterwards and attack again and send it to and pick up the kill because of course with flame and Niffle that is already 51 percent damage reduction i believe or is that 49 i'm probably mixing up in my head because it's 49 I think it's 51 percent damage reduction which is a f close enough to 50 and then of course there's hardy fighter ice mirror so of course we could go and turn one and attack while ice mirror is not up but once we attack once ice mirror charges up so then the following attack way too much damage reduction um, we would not be able to pump out that much damage output but as you can see here pretty clean sweep Nothing too mind-blowing. And well, a, a common theme in this shenanigans on defense this week is, of course, we're weak to turn one. And so a lot of people this week, no surprise, bring pretty hyper-offensive teams. And here, yeah. here he gets to just proc lethality on Sela with a clean one-shot doesn't have to worry about getting countered, and they have safety fence, so that's just a clean screw up of the infantry pulse ladder. Not that it actually matters, of course, because they're just going to be going on the offensive anyways. 
not like the infantry pulls back to do anything. They're just going in because it's the easiest free turn one kill to get. So of course, one thing we could do is just stack even more structures on that side of the map, so it's harder for them to do that, but um, for this particular layout, that would have been better, just because there's no ranged units except for Granamond, so we wouldn't really have to worry about both baiting behind structures as much. They would be having to do that from the right side of the map, or they have to break all the structures on the left side of the map to allow our melee units to also reach, but just an easy clean sweep here for them, nothing too special. We don't have Duo's Hindrance again, so it's just free real estate. And of course, we also intentionally set it up so that you can just corner one of our units. They choose to corner the Bramond, which is pretty standard. And it'll just be an easy sweep. Mean one shot, Divine and Ripperonis to us. And here we are once again with the other classic strategy people bring against our defense, and turn. <laughs> what a surprise. But um, interesting setup here. We do have ally support between Ash and Paul and Edelgard, which seems fine. Definitely like the mobility and opening retainer from opening retainer, and also the joint drive attack built in. Definitely useful, especially when Paul and Edelgard all she wants to do is one shot because if she can't one shot, she is definitely in some trouble. Here we're going to get the classic end turn. Bramamon going to hit the 43 times four, but of course, the problem is he's not going to get all of those attacks at once, so he's not going to be able to one round KO, especially because of deflect magic, and so he's just going to pick up the one shot there. But here, Anana's going to revenge kill oh with God, the 54 times 4. Just murder Fallen Edelgard twice over, even if she had 99 Just HP. Die. That's pretty much the meme of this week on so... the Didn't get to see it happen too much, of course, because it's pretty contrived. To so get it to happen, people pretty much have to allow it to happen. Here, I'm not entirely sure why they just. Attack Ash. I guess they want to pick up the kill on Nana with a follow-up attack or something. Not entirely sure. Because of course we're going to get the memory of our units not moving in the way we want them to. But we do get harmonized Katria getting walled by Party Fighter Pavis. So he gets to survive at least, which is cool, but that's about it. And they're just gonna surrender here. Of course, Nana's still here, so that's a problem. When I initially w looked at this replay, I got confused for a second, but it's because somehow the matchmaker decided to troll and match this person up with my defense twice. <laughs> So we're pretty much going to see something similar for the first time. Not quite the same, so that's interesting to see. Neo. They didn't exactly copy and paste, but they don't need to. This time around they get exact lethal on Celis compared to the 70 damage from last time, I believe. But it doesn't matter. I don't know if they calc that out. That could have been pretty bad if they were going for that turn one snipe. <laughs> but then casually missed the kill because Milo wasn't in range or something. The coolest. But it uh, looks like we just lost one and ten. <laughs> I'm not sure why that happened, but of course this is going to be a rampage again like usual. Your time is up. Because this team is basically no any enemy phase. The only enemy phase is the draw AP pretty much and Zealot. And of course, Celeste just gets one shot by lethality, so... Because he doesn't have enough HP. Since we are running Harmonized Catria over a third defense mythic, we do have less HP overall. So, that's definitely a huge drawback with running Harmonized Catria, that we 
kind of run out of slots for units to actually do damage. Kind of a small problem there, but what are you gonna do? I was just trying it out this week. Definitely funny to see legendary nana quadding. Not very many units can survive You're such things. Coolest. You pretty much just need a massive defense stat so that you take zero times four from her base attack, and then so all the damage you take is just her dealt damage from her B skill. But of course, if Nana gets to like uh, 120 attack, her dealt damage from a quad is already 96 damage. So, and even against blue units, unless you have triangle adapters, I think you still will have, what is that, 96 attack or something? Getting 96 defense as a blue unit is non trivial without spamming a ton of buffs. So, of course, the main solution there would be debuffing her tank. Classic. But all of her damage scales off of her attack and speed. Her speed with the respect of attacking more than once. In the case of triangle attack shenanigans attacking four times versus two times, which is a pretty big deal. But here they're just gonna hit and turn, obviously we all know how this is going to end. Um yeah, not a quadding once again. <laughs> uh I just have Moonbell on her purely because she's never going to proc heal force on defense unless they really do something ridiculous. So I wish to be of aid. Nana just going to absolutely terrorize. And Moonbell is there over Glimmer just because of course the dealt damage does not scale with Glimmer. And her Glimmer does not scale with the dealt damage, sorry. And when she's failing to pick up kills, it's because the enemy has too much defense slash HP in the first place, so Moonbow is just better. And well, once again, no surprise, we're going to get more turn one shenanigans. That's why putting a third structure up here would be quite useful. It still wouldn't prevent people from going for those turn one snipes, especially against teams like this, where they have multiple dancers. But it would definitely Better inconvenience them more. He herself just can't pick up the one shot. Step aside. Even if he had Glimmer, he still wouldn't have picked up the one shot. So yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we can't really do much about that. That would be something where we would have to have our second round one on sword and have more attack buffs going around. But at this point, Yuri is already in the Wings of Mercy range, so they can just go to town with their Gale Force if they so choose. I'm just gonna go ahead and go in with Duo Corn. Go with all the Duo skill spamming and wadding everything to death. Seventy-two times two, barely picking up the one-shot nils. Actually, would have missed it if we had our usual third mythic. That's definitely a thing that's kind of awkward. Um, having either having two defense mythics or three defense mythics for us. Honestly, I think I like having only two defense mythics because most of the time the defense mythics are just there to buff HP. <laughs> Which is useful to a degree, but I mean, what are we going to do against Divine teams punishment. like this where they're just going to go all our offense into our defense? Our defense is not engineered to handle such things, so it's just another clean sweep. And once again, we do see another Fallen Guild Garden Company. Double Earth Legendary Heroes. Kind of interesting to see. Not sure how well Legendary Seleph does an offense, but I imagine he can't do that well. Unless he had some way to get Vantage in the double attack, <laughs> like he does in his base kit, but he has to take enemy hits. I don't know. Here we don't get the triangle attack shenanigans. Not that it actually matters too much at the end of the day. 
Oh, we still would have missed Crumble the kill by ash. one. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Unless we had the drive attack for not, but... Of course, our defense is not going to do very many things here. Unable to take out Harmonize Catria a little too fast for them. They do get the healing. And they also chip down Nana, who has the terrible enemy phase. So, only Edelgard's going to be able to pick up the one shot now. And now she can go ahead on her little rampage. Blood coming to town to pick up that kill and Perish. this is Bonfire. They should be able to take out Knot because of course Knot has terrible HP. So it doesn't matter, really matter if you have 40% damage reduction if you're going to struggle to do that kind of stuff. Perish. Of course, Celeth is barely going to survive, but it doesn't really matter since he can't proc Ignis. And without that Ignis, he can't do enough damage to the Nail Guard, so it has to rip. So now all that's left for them to do is pick up the last East structures, which are not too difficult to get considering they have ranged units to stall out. Sylvia, while they go after the structures. But here it seems like they don't bait out Sylvia with a ranged unit, so she's just going to die before they get the second heat structure. That that was not played well. Could have been a mistap somewhere, but I wasn't paying attention, so I don't know if it was an obvious looking mistap. Here we have more player face shenanigans. You definitely don't need a maxed out duo for him to do pretty solid things on E3's offensive here, but it's definitely nice for the extra attack and speed, and even on occasion the extra bulk. Although the extra HP can sometimes make You've it harder to set up fun. some mercy. So there's always that, but at the end of the day, the difference between plus zero and plus ten is four HP. How much could that possibly be a big deal? But like usual, our defense is going to do mean things, because we have the rally on Catria purely for if someone baits on the left side. Otherwise it's really me. bad. Especially if people have range cabs and whatnot to threaten our units to force the rally. So, it's going to be an easy sweep for them at this point. Sela going to get one shot by the bonfire. And now they have Ash and Prime real estate to just go ham. And of course, Nana has no enemy phase. At least she avoids the double, that's cool. That's about it. <laughs> Speaking of avoiding the double though in Arena this week, man, the speed shenanigans in Arena are so ridiculous. Granted, we don't have the speed super boon on legendary Nana, so that probably would have made things simpler this week, but. I was trying to do a lot of Legendary Nana pick up all four bonus skills with her this season, but not easy. Just because, especially at the super high scoring team, they're all ranged pretty much. And because we don't have any effectively, or not even effectively, just three move ranged units, we can't force rallies and have the AI potato as we usually do. But having that as an option is definitely super nice. Here we go again. More shenanigans here. We got ourselves near safe Brave Hector. I wonder if he could survive a quad from Nana. Probably. Actually, I don't know. He does have close defense 4. So that's something. They do have Milo as well. They're not isolating... Catria though. So let's see, are they going to 
Looks like they're just going to uh, My take feet out stand Celebrate firm. the Ruler. It's fine. I don't have to worry about his weakness. And I guess they're just going to hit unturn. But now, of course, in this state, we can't get the quad attack from legendary Nana. So, she actually would barely one round KO in her state. Okay. Well, that's basically why quadding is helpful there. Shameful. <laughs> that would be so rigged, though. Maybe they calc that out and saw that that was going to happen. And of course, at that point, Brave Hector would be kind of in a pickle. But yes, well played there. And now they can just clean up. Because the Bramon's just going to be trailing as usual. Perish! They also had Milo, of course, so they could just isolate the rally, so there no triangle attack shenanigans could happen with legendary Nana, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. And turn here, and the only difficulty will be picking up the music structures. But honestly, that shouldn't be too difficult either. Actually, it might be a little difficult here. Yeah, it looks like we're just gonna have to hit end turn here. And I don't... Brown one, probably... Oh wait, they're not running right, right, right. This is a standard thing that people do. I do take my They run uh, an A skill that allows her to counter the range. Like, they just have her stall the range units, and then... During their player phase, they can move down. The so, these kind of strats are pretty solid until you're up against actually decent triangle attack shenanigans where the ranged units can quad and whatnot. Because this particular Thune does not have a consistent way of rocking Sacred Cowl, and she doesn't have something like Deflection Magic, so that can definitely be a huge problem. I also forgot to mention on offense this week, we just goofed during one match and sacked a unit when we didn't need to because we were just playing absolutely brain dead like usual. It was, it was a super long day, so very little thought put into the actual plays that we made. So we ended up losing, I believe, 60 lift. Much. Yeah, because we weren't running a bonus unit. So, definitely not the greatest on offense, but the very last match of the season was pretty nice. We were up against uh, Duo Dagger, not Triandra, Legendary Sigurd, Hell, uh, Brave Erica, and I'm forgetting the last unit. I don't know why I'm forgetting the last unit. But it was pretty, pretty cool because we ended up going. Oh, it's Harmonious Capture, right? <laughs> uh, because we ended up going for the ultimate meme shenanigans. Yeah. Speaking of memes, we unfortunately missed the one shot in Yuri here, and of course that's going to be a death sentence for us because now all of our units are just in range to get murdered. But. I had Ash one round KO their plus 10 legendary figure. Thanks to Bonfire, it was a pretty close margin, especially You've since it is fun. wind season, so we just had more HP and stuff. I think he had 65 defense against Ash, so pretty hefty defense stat. And so. Uh, and because he procced Holy Knight Hara, that allowed Nino to long bait their duo dagger, who I calc out. Done course couldn't one shot Nino and got one shot on the counter. The biggest thing there is that she gets the plus six field buff from Holy Knight Ara, which thanks to her Hold a grudge if I don't you know must. how to pronounce it, Goat Nargo. <laughs> Goat Nargo. No idea, but because of that bow, that's an extra minus six attack on Nino. So overall of her kit she was debuffing by 15 points of attack. Pretty big deal, but they didn't have Bright Shrine or anything which meant we could get away with a lot more shenanigans. We were also one round KOing the Brave Erica. We couldn't one-shot the Brave Erica through the 30% damage reduction. 
but we could actually double exactly. <laughs> it was an exact double with how we were setting up our play, so everything just worked out for us. Pretty nice, pretty nice match, but unfortunately could not record it. Yeah, after that, it was pretty cakewalk since all the other units just could not reach. And we were just isolating the Triandra down so that she couldn't do any funny dance follow-up shenanigans. Here, let's see what they do. Obviously, they don't want Brave Edelgard going up against Legendary Nana. That would probably not be a good idea. But, you know, if you're not up against Legendary Nana, there's not very many other units that you'll see on defense who can reliably one-round KO Brave Edelgard. Sometimes you'll need a quad or something. But quads definitely help because, of course, the first two attacks, unless she's running, like, the or something. She is going to have to do damage reduction against them unless they bring something like Plane. Here, thanks to Ice Mirror, they're going to take a zero. Pretty solid there. Could have been disastrous for them. But uh, not, hurts, not going to do very much to Brave Edelgard. Still path. doing 13 damage is pretty good. Granted, it is Luna, so I would hope he would do more than two damage. And here, they're getting ready to move in. They dance and they surrender. Why exactly they surrendered? I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer, but just keep in mind that he and he's standing here. <laughs> and they have to get rid of Legendary Nana. They, they don't want Brave Edelgard 1v1ing her, for sure. Not to mention, there's also Harmonious Catcher, though. She's not too big of a deal because of where she's at right now. But yeah, uh, kind of a small problem there. And with that, we did absolutely atrocious on defense this week, kind of expected. Didn't hope we got mashed up with this person randomly twice over the, like, back-to-back -back days. <laughs> uh, probably just we climbed too fast, so the matchmaker couldn't find anyone and just did that. But, yeah. Lots of lift loss this week. We can actually still lose lift if someone matches us again. Currently out of lift loss protection, as you can see. So... We could technically lose more lift, but we can't be kicked out of Volt, which is cool. So, looks like we'll make probably top 6k. Next season, we have Doom at least to plonk our defense. So we'll just have to play super well on offense again if we want to stay. Unfortunately, we didn't pick up Elamine, so that's a problem. Maybe we could try using Legendary Claude on offense, but honestly, that sounds terrible. The only value he would provide is the gravity, but you would have to get him into attack in the first place, and when we only use one team on offense, you have to be able to deal with everything, <laughs> and uh, legendary quads damage, especially when mine is minus attack, not going to go well. But going back to briefly talk about offense, of course for the most part this week was relatively cakewalk for matchups. It was only difficult when we were trying to pick up four kills, against a team of all ranged units that was generally pretty difficult because we couldn't force rallies where we wanted to and of course legendary nana's enemy phase is pretty meh <laughs> her overall bulk not amazing of course we did perfectly fine on defense this week a lot of defense wins but i was initially planning on going for 3900 this week all 768s the max possible score you could get because we could I found five of them this week during our random matches, but when I actually started trying to fish for them, yeah, they just weren't showing up. <laughs> Heck, I couldn't even find 764s, so it was pretty awkward. But I decided we're not going to do it. Just went for 3,882 to be completely safe. Pretty certain that 3,880 is staying. It is a 10 point increase from last season, but that makes sense, of course, because people always try to bump up the cutoff every progressive season where that's feasible. AKA, if it wasn't Earth season this week, it probably wouldn't have happened, but anyways, enough rambling, we'll be back when the results drop in. 
Okay, let's quickly collect everything. Because we're in a hurry. Ooh. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. We're just gonna be bonking on defense. Don't know actually who I'm gonna use now that I think about it. Probably. Oh, we can kick out Rowan, right? Okay, it'll be Krom and Nana probably. For some reason, it didn't occur to me that I was a thing, but unfortunately, back down at 18, so we didn't get that many feathers, but. Oh well. This next upcoming arena season will be interesting because it's still Earth season, but uh, it's Cordelia bonus or Legendary Claude, I believe, and we only have Legendary Claude plus zero, so I think it's better to score bot pretty hard with our double Earth Legendaries here with Cordelia, since she already has an Earth Blessing, there's nothing to lose, so... That's gonna be it for this episode, thanks for watching, as always, this is Ethan Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!